Following Gamera vs. Giron, which was another box office hit, Dai Studio wasted no time getting together another sequel, this time giving director Noriaki Iwasa a bigger budget to work with. This, along with a timely tie-in with Expo 70, which was taking place at the time, was a welcome change that allowed him to instill the film with the grander qualities that had been missing in the past few entries. Thus, the sixth film in the series, Gamera vs. Jiger, is a major improvement, delivering solid kaiju entertainment that adds some fresh ideas to the franchise formula. As Japan is preparing for Expo 70, a World's Fair being held in Osaka, the removal of a large statue in Wester Island awakens the monster Jiger, who begins rampaging through Japan in her efforts to reach it. As the fate of Japan, and more importantly Expo 70, hangs in the balance, Gamera arrives to stop the mysterious creature, who proves to be a dangerous foe, incapacitating the friend of all children via a parasitic larva she implants within him. With Gamera out of commission, it's up to two boys to venture inside the giant turtle, and rid him of the parasite before Jiger cancels Expo 70 permanently. Following a couple substandard entries, Gamera vs. Jiger is a breath of fresh air. Thanks to a bigger budget, the film doesn't feel as cheap or restrained, relishing in the over-the-top fun-filled carnage that makes these films entertaining. The film wastes no time, putting the monsters front and center in a story that, while just as simplistic as prior entries, balances itself well with the human cast that populate it. And thanks to an antagonist uniquely powerful enough to truly give Gamera a run for his money, it's able to throw in some dramatic curveballs that even further differentiates it from past entries. Make no mistake, it's still a Showa-era Gamera movie, and thus follows the same formula, but there's just enough new ideas here to make it feel fresh, and yes, even inspired. Easily the most memorable thing about Gamera vs. Jiger is Jiger herself. While on the surface she seems a bit generic, over the course of the film she reveals herself to be more than capable of fighting back against Gamera. The two scrap three times throughout the film, and every time she reveals a new ability that throws Gamera off his game. This creates some genuine tension in the fights, and even a few surprises, the biggest of which is when Jiger injects Gamera with her larva. This leads into the best turn of the film, where the two boys actually have to go inside Gamera a fantastic voyage style to rid him of the parasite. It's absolutely bonkers, but in a good way, adding some much needed creativity to a franchise that had already begun growing stale many movies ago. <laughs> Those looking to get their fill of the flying turtle will also feel satisfied by Gamera vs. Jiger. He is featured prominently throughout, and none of it is stock footage. And for perhaps the first time, you really get a sense of his character here, his perseverance and ingenuity. This is part of what makes the fights of this film some of the more delightful of the franchise. Both creatures sport creative tactics, and part of the fun is seeing Jiger dole out a surprising new power that throws Gamera for a loop, forcing him to figure out how to overcome it. Now if only those kids would shut up up and let him fight. Yes, just like all the prior films, Gamera vs. Jiger features a duo of young boys at the center of the plot. However, they skew a little older this time, and thus thankfully don't irritate quite as much. The two boys, Hiroshi and Tommy, played by Satomu Takakua and Kelly Varis, are actually given interesting things to do other than run around and outsmart dumb people. Their journey inside Gamera is the best segment of the film, even if it doesn't make a lick of sense. And in a refreshing turn, the narrative isn't entirely focused on the kids this time, with their antics more evenly balanced with the adult characters, a reflection of the film's balance between lighthearted kitty fair and some more serious stakes. It's still silly beyond measure, but with a bit of the maturity and edge that had been missing in the past few films. It becomes apparent very quickly that Gamera vs. Jiger benefits from its larger budget. The action and special effects come larger and faster here, and much of it takes place in the city, so those looking to scratch their itch for destruction won't be disappointed. Jiger is a surprisingly well-actualized quadrupedal creature, walking on all fours at a time when many suit actors were restricted to crawling on their knees. Composer Shusuke Kikuchi returns to score, providing the film with more of his classically stylized soundscape, and Noriaki Iwasa's direction shows signs of improvement, calling upon now many years of experience to craft some of the best monster fights. 
Gamera vs. Jiger is an unexpectedly solid Gamera film in a time when the series was stretching itself thin. While just as dumb and wacky as you'd expect at this point, it had the resources to pull off some really entertaining action scenes, including some dramatic turns that take it to the next level and make it one of the more memorable old-school kaiju flicks you'll come across. Gamera and Jiger are given plenty to do, and the action is mixed in well with the human element, making for a breezy viewing experience that fans should have a lot of fun with. For more reviews and opinions on all things Gamera, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.